I'm here with Jeff Cook, and you have an inertial propulsion device that you brought to demonstrate. Yeah, there's a number of experiments I've done in the past year. I got funded through a grant, and uh, it was mainly exploring the poles of magnetic fields, and some other properties that are going on there uh, have other implications. I've also done it with altering the E and B fields and, and seeing how the changing fields and collapsing fields have an impact on energy, the ground state, etc. The uh, um, so now this one is experiment the... resulted in a path, and so we can make a toy. There is a video that will be online um, in the next coming days, that, uh, because these will be for sale in the next coming days. We have a company that's formed based. What you have is with a, a ring magnet on the inside and uh, um, just a regular ma disc magnet on the inside here. And when they are brought together, they lock in an offset position. That magnet will not want to be at the center of the ring magnet. Now, okay. the reason is because the ring magnet and the disc magnet are not homotopic. That, that means that they cannot be shaped or molded mathematically or physically without breaking a hole. When you do that with magnetic fields, you get other benefits from it. And one of them is if you bring that magnet beyond the halfway point of the other magnet, you better look out. Very good. And you just bring it, no matter how fast or how slowly, it then comes out. Okay. Now, you may say that this is like a coil gun or a rail gun. It's more similar, similar to a rail gun, even though it has no Lorenz um, force involved. How it is unlike a coil gun is because it has absolutely zero reaction or zero recoil on the launcher. This can be demonstrated with other aspects. You can actually take a restrict a ring magnet with some fixed thing so it doesn't go forward, but the magnet can come out and then it can be permitted to kick back. By doing that, you will see, as soon as you press it back, it does not kick back at all. And the reason it does that, Newton's laws of motion says for every action there is an equal but opposite reaction. Yeah, if I could get you to wind it up one more time for me. So, so basically you're just... I just, I place it here and it goes in. Okay. All right, and it locks a, at a distance a certain amount away from the ring magnet. It doesn't want to go to or fro. So essentially, then what you do, I'm gonna catch this one so we don't uh, have it flying all over the place, is basically you slowly turn it, slowly, and boom, it comes firing out. The wow. reason is, is the reaction is the motion, and it is independent from the structure here. I can explain how that happens. All right, imagine you have a ball, a large heavy ball or a rock, but it's perfectly round, and you're pushing it up an incline that is gradually increasing. All right, so it's kind of like going higher and steeper and steeper and steeper. When you get to the top of that cliff, that ball can fall back this way or it can fall forward. If it falls back this way, you will get an effect on the ramp or the mountain or something like that. If it falls off the edge, it has no recoil on the mountain, right? It just falls off. Okay. A ball falling has no impact on the mountain. Coming back, it does. So here, watch, we can see the recoil when it goes in, you'll see this, this vibrate, right? You see it kind of shifts like that. That's on this side of the ramp. When it goes beyond that halfway point, it's then falling. Okay, it is falling out. It's actually more equivalent to being pulled out. The, the, the theory is, and I have a paper showing how the, the fields map. The theory is that it is the vacuum field. There's a lot of other experiments that, have, that demonstrate this, but it's the field of vacuum interacting with the magnetic fields because it is put in a situation it doesn't want to go. Nature chooses the lesser of two actions. If there's a path that goes this way, it's easier. If it goes this one, it's harder. It's always going to choose this way, even if it has to expend a greater amount of energy mm. because the vacuum field has an infinite supply of energy, but very little action. Our action would be like a bus going around in a circle in a roundabout, okay? It's going around and around and around. It's repeating that action. Therefore, you have a frequency, you have a mass of the bus, you have the energy of that, and that space that it is in is the field. Now, you can have actions within actions. Imagine a man inside the bus walking back and forth. 
As long as he is walking back and forth, it does not disrupt the system. However, if that man that's walking up and down the aisle goes and pushes the driver out, that field, exterior field, is also eliminated. That field collapses, that bus stops. And that is measured in physics on half-life. And every system will eventually stop. The bus will run out of gas, okay? In this case, we have this uh, action that is required to get it out of the system. Because once it's beyond that halfway point, it would take a greater action to go back. It doesn't want to do that. Vacuum field then becomes involved. That's the theory. And uh, I'll be presenting a paper if you need more video footage tomorrow around 10, 1030. But this is also for sale in, in a couple days. Um, and uh, so that anyone can sit there and experiment with it. You can add uh, a car in the front so you can launch trains. They both work fine. Well, um, well let me ask where people can yeah. learn more about this. Uh, what, 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 what's the website where they can purchase this? Or? I have the, it'll be on Kickstarter. So I imagine it's not set up yet, but it's gonna be Kickstarter forward slash uh, Zeta Launcher. Okay. The, the product is called Zeta Launcher. It also may be, um, no, I'm sure it's gonna be Zeta Launcher, so that's what it said. But uh, we have, you know, like I said, it's the sales will be going through back orders through Kickstarter, but we have the company formed, vestment, uh, design, everything ready to go. Just now it's starting to take orders, and uh, we're going to do that through Kickstarter. Awesome, awesome. Okay. So that's that's. Completely. Now, do you, do you have uh, in terms of publishing? Uh, is there any place that people can learn more about this online? Or unfortunately, no, not at this time. I have taken my website uh, down about a year and a half, two years ago, because there were some gaps in the math and some gaps in, in the physics that needed to be explained. In fact, I was working on a book which will also be published now that I finished the paper. The book then came back into it. The paper is, is in the Proceedings of the Natural Philosophy Alliance. There are two papers there that describe it. They are available online at the MPA. Just do MPA, search for um, abstracts under Jeff Cook and you can read all of my papers there. In time, after I finished my other publications, I got one other paper to, to I have to follow up from the grant, to, you know, it's my requirement. It's hundreds and hundreds of, of, of files of data. After I go over that, that paper, and then a book, then I'm gonna put my website back up and describe it in lay terms for lay people, but also will have the publications of the actual papers, the math, so people can work it out. It's actually, the, the math is very strong and it's been peer reviewed. And uh, um, so it basically shows how the magnetic fields and the vacuum field interact. There are a lot of standard models of this. Relativity, um, Planck discussed it a lot. One of them. And uh, it's very well defined. But there is one, one uh, equation that, that's been lacking. It's a Lagrangian that describes all the fields summed together. So basically what I have done is I've taken all the sum of all possible fields and they end up equaling the vacuum field, just as physicists suggest it should. There are a number, I have about 16 or 17 different demonstrations of how, very similar to this, of how the vacuum field can interact with other fields, how it is used, why it is there, what it is, and um, this is but one, it happened to have some marketable aspect to it, so we, I decided to uh, apply for the patent and uh, start a company based on it and then continue the research in the other areas. Most people yesterday were interested in the uh, um, the energy aspects of, of one of the experiments that I showed, which is quite profound in itself. But it took me about 45 minutes to set everything up, get all the quails, and, and but th there are videos online. I believe there's a YouTube page. I plan on putting more on that. It's uh, just do a YouTube to search uh, Jeff Cook effect, and it'll probably pull up my, my uh, site. Uh, that term is a bit outdated, actually, I, I believe, because this is, this is a bit better understanding that I've acquired over years of what's going on and what 